Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how .NET 7 fixes what was my biggest complaint with minimal APIs. I was pretty vocal about it, I made I think two videos on the matter and I'm super happy that they did it. Now I don't know if my videos did influence their decision but I know that they were acknowledged by the team and recognized as potentially a problem. So let's see how they're sorting it out now in .NET 7. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. Now, just a quick reminder that I do have a full course on minimal APIs covering pretty much everything and it is getting updated with all the changes that we're getting in .NET 7. The price will get a small increase just because of all the new content being added but if you have already bought it or you buy it now before the update in November then you get to keep it and get all the new things for free. All right so let me show you what I have here. So I have two sets of projects. One is using .NET 6 and the other one is using .NET 7. I'm going to show you the .NET 6 first. So it's a simple minimal API which is a bit structured. I have my endpoints over here and this is effectively my customer endpoint so I can get a customer and I can create a customer and I'm going to run that real quick just to show you how it works from a consumer perspective. So what I can do is go to this customer's endpoint, hit send and this will create a customer for me and then I can get the ID and I can get a customer and if I get the customer all good, uh, if the customer doesn't exist then not found. Very basic couple of endpoints. Now here's where the biggest problem lies with this implementation of .NET 6. Now here's where the problematic thing lies. This iResult interface which is used to represent any type of result that encapsulates things like status code, uh, response object, maybe some location, header values and all of that, has these types over here through this static results um, class. However, all of these types like the bad object result or the conflict object result or no content result, all of these, they are internal. Meaning that if you wanna do anything interesting with them in some context, you can't because you can only access them through reflection. In no other way can you do that. And also, you can see that this is accepting an object, not a generic parameter, so you're also losing the type itself when you're using them. Now, I want you to remember that this is using the Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.HTTP namespace, and I'm going to explain why that's important. Now, here's where my biggest complaint was. If I go to this unit test project, and I show you this unit test for this endpoint. So get customer, return is not found when customer doesn't exist. There is no way for me to cast this I result and this is an I result and say as OK object result. Remember that namespace that I talked to you about? This is not the same thing. They named the MVC namespace object and the HTTP, which is the minimal API objects, with the same class name and they kind of had to make one internal because there would be a conflict between the two and people wouldn't know what to use. So we kind of lost all the testability of being able to cast or use the methods to use the types at compile time just so they don't have to deal with this conflict which is bad for many reasons. Now, the weird thing is that in the world of controllers, you can do that, you can access them, you can cast them, and you can write tests for your endpoints in that way. Now, should you? Well, maybe not. If you have integration tests, maybe you don't need to do that. However, if you just want a quick feedback loop to see if your mappers work, or if the location header is set correctly, or if the response object is in place the way you expected, then you might want to have them. The thing is, you should have the choice. It was possible in controllers, leave it possible in minimal APIs. The new approach doesn't have to take things away like that. And the reason why this is also important is because if I was able to have a specific type for things that only return one result type here, then things like Swagger could check that and generate meaningful metadata for my endpoint through that. So by not having access to the concrete type, you're losing quite a lot. Now, here's where .NET 7 comes in. Now, this minimal API in .NET 7 is the exact same thing. It's the exact same code. I've changed nothing. It's the same I result. It's the same results dot not found. Everything is the same. However, these methods now, the not found, the okay, and all that, they do not return the same result as before. Let me show you over here if I find this not found. Where is it? It is here. As you can see, this and this different code. So what they actually did is that they made new implementations 
for that same eye result. If we wait for it to load, you can see it's the same interface. However, now we have these typed results, which if I show you here, are actually public sealed. And you can access them and you can do whatever you want with them. You can cast them, you can deal with them. They basically have the same code inside them as the previous results classes. However, here's where it becomes very interesting. You can see that now we have generic alternatives, meaning we no longer have to lose the type itself. We can still have access to the type over here. If I go to this new, you can see we have T type from the generic type parameter, meaning we can do more interesting stuff here. And if you want to write your own implementation, you can do cool things as well. And what I can do now is I can go to this .NET 7 unit test project and I can open the same exact unit test and I can say result, which is the I result we talked about, as not found because this is returning not found, I know this. And I can access the not found properties. In this case, it's just the status code. So status code should be 404. And if I go ahead and I run this request, then as you can hopefully see, the test is passing. And I can do the same with the happy path. So for example, in this test, get customer returns customer when customer exists, just to validate that the right object is being returned. I can say result as OK, and it's an OK with a generic type parameter because now I'm not losing the customer class, which is awesome. And I can say that the value should be customer. And I can also, if I want, validate that the status code is 200. So I can say something like status code should be 200 because that is an OK result. Let's make this a bit smaller so you can see it. And if I go ahead and I run this unit test as well, then everything works. Now, do you want to write unit tests like this? Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but at least now you have access to the types and you can do whatever you want with this. I'm personally super happy that they're listening and they're addressing those small issues because it could throw people off trying to do this. And there are GitHub issues mentioning this and saying, why is this happening? I like the way I used to write my code before. It might not be your favorite way to do this, but at least now it is possible for those who want to do it. Now, I do want to appreciate the fact that if I go back to this .NET 7 project, the exact same .NET 6 results .NET found code still works and they wrapped it around the new typed results and the typed results now over here can be used instead and they have a bunch of other methods for you to use if you want to but your existing .NET 6 code will also work with these new typed results, which is awesome. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.